if you saw my um, book haul a couple weeks ago, I got this book calculated and I was super excited to read it and I think it did live up to my expectations. I rated it four stars. So it's about this girl who has mathematical um, a mathematical gift. She's a child prodigy. She has this special gift and it claims to be Mount Count of Monte Cristo with a little bit of Mission Impossible. I thought that it did that pretty well. Um, and there is a great biblical illusion in here that you don't really notice. It's super subtle, but it's done really well. Um, I did like her gift. It seemed realistic. It didn't seem uh, so like weird and mystical like a lot of these mathematical gift books are. It was realistic, logical, and you felt like you wanted to have that gift. So I thought that was cool. I did kind of like the first person perspective of Josephine because you could see the way that these events made her feel um, and what she was struggling with through each event, which I thought was cool. And um, you feel really compassionate for her for, she doesn't feel like she's appreciated apart from her gift. She feels like everyone just looks at her and sees her gift and I really felt for her in that. Um, and then there is the main hero, Kai, and I thought he was great. He was funny, he was bold, he was honest, he was just a good friend, he saw, past the her just gift that she had and saw her as a person as a friend so he was really great um i did not like red which a lot of people like um but he's like the mentor but it was a lot of just spiritual eastern religion type stuff and kind of like moralism and there were just like long speeches from him i thought that was pretty boring um but really i think the biggest thing that kind of took away a star was the fact that it was the like um flashback storytelling is what I'm gonna call it um it's just not my cup of tea if you watch this video or other videos um you know that I don't particularly like that where you're going back and forth from the present to the past I wish it was more of a linear storyline as ca classic authors like Dickens or Austin do you know telling a story from A to B um but still doing a good job of character development so I didn't particularly like that aspect of this um so if you like math prodigies, the intense missions and and um, intense moments that they're in, um, the lessons of doing good rather than seeking revenge, and, and then the sweet family reunion, I think this is a great book for you and a fun book to read. And there are two sequels so far and a movie coming out. So it's a fun thing to dive into and um, be able to be part of, of this book. So uh, content. The um, really big aspect of the story is, funnily, um, that, that she's kind of rescuing girls from being trafficked. But again, um, Nova B, B did a great job of conveying just the depravity of this, but not being graphic about it or having really anything objectionable in there. Like if you don't know what human trafficking is, you're not going to figure it out from this book because she does a great job of making you feel gross and, and feeling that these people are evil, but without explicitly doing it, which I thought was just really well done. Um, and then there is a creepy guy approaching a young woman, um, very subtle language, language in there, and I don't even really remember what it was. Um, there is a kiss and there is a mention of a man having affairs, but overall, pretty clean book. Oh, I'm very talkative. <sighs> I'm okay, next book is The Mystery of History, Volume 1. I couldn't find the nicer copy that I had. I rated it five stars. So it's a history textbook. This was the one that was a lot of pages, and I read it over the last nine months for my brother's history. I read a couple chapters aloud a week to them, and this goes um, from creation to the resurrection. If you're looking for a homeschool history curriculum um, spine, I guess, I would highly recommend this one. I've tried a lot. I like Story of the World. It has some good stuff in it that can be supplemented. Um, I've tried Biblioplan and Tapestry of Grace and Streams of Civilization, but I just really like her perspective and I agreed on a lot of the theology she had in here and even some of like the controversial parts of history. I appreciated her um, opinion and the, the viewpoint that she took on there. So I think um, I really enjoyed that. Um, there are a lot of Bible stories in here, which I did tend to skip over those because we were already doing them like at the same time, either in Sunday school classes or in our family worship. Um, but I loved putting all those 
stories into perspective and seeing what was going on in, around all those things and putting it into context. So um, I would highly recommend this book if you're looking for a history book. <clears throat> then I finished two books for book studies this month. So Anxiety, Knowing God's Peace by Paul Tauchus. I think I talked about this in another video that Paul Tauchus was my ACBC counseling supervisor and he wrote this little 31 day devotional. Um, and so it goes through, it's just a two page devotional and it has a Bible verse, talks about anxiety, and then it has really, really good questions at the end. I gave this five stars. I don't particularly struggle with anxiety, but I personally found this super helpful just in the way he laid things out and the truth he brings out that if you do have a moment that you, you're anxious, you can remember specific things from here. And um, I've used these things in my own thoughts and just having conversations with other people, just the truths that he brings out here. I went through it with a counselee. She found it very helpful, and I know other people who have struggled with anxiety really like this. So if you're looking for an anxiety book, I think for something short, manageable, that's not gonna make you more anxious because you can just do one page a day, this is a great little resource that I would highly recommend. And he has um, further resources in the back if you want a bigger book. Uh, then the other book study that I just finished was It's Not That Complicated, How to Relate to Guys in a Healthy, Sane, and Biblical Way. This is actually my third time reading this book, and typically I don't read books that much, but I went through this um, as a book study with some young women in our church, and um, this I felt like was just the best book that I've read on this topic. And reading it for the third time, again, I found so many things to be helpful to me just in thinking about guys as people, as brothers in Christ, and not having um, these romantic thoughts and, and daydreams and castle in the sky as soon as you meet them, um, how to just be a good friend. There's a lot of things in here that I've applied to my relationships with my brothers and even relationships with other women, um, just because it talks about how to just be a good Christian, fulfill those one another's and have good conversations. There's a lot of great stuff about um, feminism in here, about talking to your parents. The last two chapters are great on how to grow as a woman right now, use your single years um, wisely and fruitfully, and how to be content. I, I really like this book. There are very, very minor things that I would disagree with in here, but as always, you should read um, books like this with discernment. So if you have a daughter who would benefit from this or you would benefit from this as a single woman, I would highly recommend reading this book. And then lastly, and possibly least, um, The Crossfire by Lynette Eason. This is Extreme Measures number two. I've read quite a few Lynette Eason because they are all audiobooks and when I can't find anything else to read sometimes I will resort to these. I have not been very impressed with her books. They're just very run-in-the-mill Christian fiction suspense books. If suspense is your thing and you want it to be clean, have at it, but um, it's not some like a genre that I'm specifically looking for. Um, I really didn't even write a review for this um, just because I didn't have any strong thoughts about it. I hardly remember it. I finished it a couple of days ago. Um, if you like hostage situations, FBI, then sure, it's cool, um, but I didn't love it. One of my booktube friends, Lindsay, she really liked this book, gave it four stars, and she wrote a full content warning. So if you're interested in that, I'll leave the link below. But yeah, not my favorite book of the month. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and seeing a lot of Christian fiction that I read this month. But a lot of these books were on my want to read and I kind of wanted to get them um, knocked out of the way and get to these bigger books that I may have been procrastinating about. But I, um, I have plenty of time this month. We're going on vacation. I have plenty of time to read and so probably... Um, July's video is going to be very long talking about all the books I read but I am going to try over the next few weeks to film a lot of videos and to get them out to you guys so uh, thank you guys for being here for subscribing for commenting and for being so faithful and watching these videos and I will see you guys later bye